Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and I am excited to be back with you for this next review. Today we are reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. So the S8 Ultra is something I've been meaning to check out for myself for a while. It's something I wanted to get reviewed for you guys for a while now too. I'm late on this one, but I guess better late than never. As always, we will be reviewing the machine from the standpoint of the creative professional. But even if you aren't a creator, you can still get good information out of this review because we're gonna be covering things from all fronts. So I've been testing the Tab Ultra for the past two and a half weeks, a little bit more maybe now, and I've been really blown away by what I have discovered. This is an incredible machine and it is one of the very best tablets I've ever tested and one of the best machines all around I've ever tested. So if you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I'm a hardcore iPad Pro user and for good reason and for specific reasons. I helped develop software for the platform specifically for iPad OS for creators and artists with Art Studio Pro. But first and foremost, I am a graphic artist, digital illustrator, and large scale printer. I'm a shop owner of 14 years. I'm also a musician and obviously a content creator for video with the channel. And the platform and the tool itself has really catered to a lot of the things I do for work. So I have a lot of deep ties to the platform, but I'm also a longtime Samsung user going all the way back to the second generation Note and using various different Notes over the years. I also then moved to the Fold with the Fold 3 and I'm about to unbox the Fold 4 and Android in general is something I've used since the early days, since before the Note. And I've used both platforms for a long time. So I've been taking you around the hardware and with the Tab Ultra, Samsung has pushed things forward in a variety of different areas. And I think one area that's pretty obvious is in design because it's not only beautiful, but it is shockingly thin. Like it is extremely thin. It is thinner than the 11 inch iPad Pro and it is coming in at just about the same weight as the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and it's a 15 inch tablet. So it doesn't feel unwieldy to hold and carry around. And from the overall size perspective, it's also quite compact. For example, if I take this and lay it on top of my 13 inch MacBook Pro, you would see that the Tab Ultra is not much bigger in overall scale than something like a 13 inch MacBook Pro. So Samsung has raised the bar here and it is awesome. Another crazy thing is you guys see how thin it is and it also has expandable memory. It's an awesome thing because we don't really see that much anymore and even more awesome that they fit it in this thin device. Another awesome thing is Samsung includes the S Pen in the box, unlike the Apple Pencil with the iPad Pro and unlike the Surface Pro with the Surface Pen. So when it comes to the feel of the S Pen, it feels great in hand, it's ergonomic. When we compare it to something like the Apple Pencil, it doesn't feel as substantial in the hand. The Apple Pencil has that true utensil-like feel in hand with its length, weight, and its unique tip design. And the S Pen goes for a different feel. It definitely feels more like a pen in hand, but it's ergonomic and I enjoy the switch up and feel that I get with the S Pen. So when you're using the Apple Pencil and you're drawing on the iPad, if the screen is not covered in fingerprints, the pencil tip gets great tooth and it has a real gritty style tooth. And the S Pen here takes a different approach. It has a more brush-like feel when you're working with it on screen. I actually like the feel a lot for drawing, sketching, and painting, and note-taking. And another great thing about this tip is it has great resistance against fingerprints, whereas the Achilles heel of the Apple Pencil tip is fingerprints. Once fingerprints get on the screen, 
the resistance starts to go and the more and more fingerprints that get on the screen, the more and more the tooth of the pencil tip gets wiped out. So you do have to clean the screen a lot to retain that tooth on the pencil tip. The S Pen also has a side switch and all around it's packing a lot of deep functionality within it and we'll get into that when we start working directly on the machine and drawing. So when it comes to the keyboard, this is an experience that I feel like kind of ties everything together. I don't think you would want the Tab Ultra without the keyboard cover. Now this thing is expensive at $350 and is it worth that? I don't really know, but I do know that it does help complete the experience and I got it on a sale for 150 and if you can find this on a sale or find one on eBay, I would because I highly recommend it because the keyboard is just really nice all around. It has a great trackpad that's very fluid. It has a great typing experience with tactile feedback on the keys, nice travel. It also has a nice backlight that kind of has a purple hue to it in the illumination, and that's cool. And the keyboard is approached differently than, let's say, how Apple approaches the magic keyboard of the iPad Pro. Samsung is focusing more so on the artist experience and the artist ergonomic experience, and that is what I love about the keyboard. So when it comes to this display, this is a beautiful screen one of Samsung's best OLED panels. And it's a different experience when you get this kind of panel in this large size. It is extremely immersive because of the overall design being so compact and thin, and then having these incredibly thin bezels that makes content consumption and creation extremely immersive. So the screen is operating at 120 Hertz with a variable refresh rate and that makes working on it extremely smooth and fluid, especially at this large size. And what can I say? This is the best display you can find in any tablet with the only thing kind of coming close and being neck and neck with it is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro's mini LED display. When it comes to the system and Samsung's UI atop Android, They've been doing great work for years and we're finally kind of starting to see their work pay off and all come together with their modern devices because it just works and it just makes sense. Samsung is doing some of the best UI and UX work for an OS in the game. They're getting a lot of things right here and that's great for the user because it pays off and it allows the user to get not only an extremely productive experience on this machine, but it also allows the user to have that flexibility and have a dynamic experience by being able to do so many things with the system. And at the same time, it's not overkill. It's done in a very simplified way and it's done in a very streamlined way. But like I was saying earlier, these things come to life better than ever before on their modern machines and with this modern UI. They've also just done great design work all around in this UI. It looks great, it feels great, and I don't have any complaints with it. And then as we move further and deeper into the system, we can find that Samsung's work with DeX has really paid off because on the Tab Ultra, you get the ability to dynamically switch between your regular standard Android tablet mode and between DeX. So with one flip of a button, flip of a switch, you are able to turn your system into a desktop environment. You can also cast DeX wirelessly to compatible displays and it's a great experience. I do this often with my LG OLED 55 and there is no lag, very low latency, and it's a fluid experience. And it's awesome to be able to have the ability to have that multi-display support with such a great environment and then being able to do that wirelessly with such low latency. 
Samsung's also built into the system the ability to use the Tab Ultra as a secondary screen for a Windows system. I'd actually love to see them work with Apple too and allow this ability uh, with Macs. That would be another awesome thing. Okay, so now we're gonna get into performance and we're gonna talk about features with the S Pen. So the S Pen comes pretty packed with features. And this is one of the Bluetooth enabled S Pens. And that allows you to access the air gesture system that Samsung has built in. And that system is awesome for creating streamlines of workflow like I'm showing you right here. So for example, with just the pen button and the gestures, I'm able to create a workflow streamline without needing the keyboard and without needing any other hotkey kind of controller. And this is one thing that I love about this experience. And it's something that I think not a lot of people dive too deep into because the gestures are kind of weird. You kind of have to get them down. And then once you actually realize how the gestures work, they pretty much work all the time. So it's a thing where you have to kind of play around with it and then once you get it, you probably won't wanna have a workflow without it. At least I don't because I don't have to bring anything else in to get that streamline of workflow. So as you can see right here, as I hold the button and go to the left or right, I am increasing and decreasing the size of the brush. Before I was showing you the canvas rotate, zoom in and out, and call upon certain panels like the color picker. So I have gotten a lot of great use out of this experience and it's something I am actively using when I am working on the tab. When it comes to overall performance, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and it is a good performer. It's not on an M1 level of performance, it's not on an M2 level of performance. But Samsung gives a lot of RAM in the experience and that kind of evens some things out. So the experience has been fluid when working on large high resolution pieces, when moving around the system, when doing a lot of multitasking. I haven't felt the machine slow down. So real world performance is good. And when we get into the actual drawing experience with the S Pen, it is what you would come to know out of a modern S Pen experience. Nice pressure, low latency, and tilt ability. Now on the pressure side of the spectrum, it's not quite as dialed in as the Apple Pencil. I do still feel the Apple Pencil has the very best curve when it comes to the mathematics of the input, but the S Pen is right up there. I mean, it's one of the best experiences too, but the Apple Pencil, if you look for the details, is slightly better when it comes to that curve, when it comes to the fall off of pressure, the low end of the spectrum. However, I don't think this is something that will hinder your drawing experience. And in fact, I think most will not notice it. So when you combine the fact that you are getting a great drawing experience, combined with the features of the S Pen, combined with the size of the canvas that you get to work on, from the big picture, it does make for a really nice digital art experience. And with the Tab Ultra, I don't feel like I need a 22 or a 24 inch pen display. We've never really had something this large in screen size that is also very portable. So it is a first of a kind in that regard. Battery life has been excellent on the Tab Ultra, one of the best and longest batteries I've seen in any tablet. So does this experience take me away from the iPad Pro? It doesn't because there's still too many differences across the ecosystems and platforms and there's certain software that just still doesn't exist here. So there's a lot of reasons for that. But what I can tell you is I got this all the way back in November. That's why you saw some shots earlier with Christmas stuff. And sometimes I'm getting something just for the purpose of reviewing it. And sometimes I'm also considering keeping it. And the Tab Ultra is something I kept. And it's something I am going to be using because I just enjoy the experience a lot. 
it's definitely something I can recommend. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in today. If you liked this video, it'd be great if you can drop a comment, drop a like, but most of all, it'd be best if you subscribe. Stay well.